did an experimental performance piece called Hear What I Feel, uh, which explored uh, in public one of the um, experimental situations that I put myself in to try to discover new sounds. Um, I taped my eyes shut uh, with masking tape and cotton balls uh, and sat for an hour before the performance in an isolated space, separate from the performance space. And um, had six glass dishes that had been set up on a, a little table uh, and had an assistant who could choose what to put in those glass dishes. The idea being that the audience could see what was in the dishes. Um, and the only stipulation that I gave was that um, that the substance should not crawl and shouldn't injure me. Um, so that I didn't have any kind of uh, fear aspect that was worked into that. So it wasn't like an Arto theater experience. <laughs> um, and then when the concert began, uh, I was led out into the performance space, still with eyes taped shut, and touched the various substances and tried to give an immediate um, response, a vocal response. Um, not trying to identify what it was, uh, but trying to just react. And I, I got lots of, of wonderful uh, responses to that piece. Um, Laurie Spiegel came up to me afterwards and um, said two things. She said uh, it was so emotional, you know, it made her cry. Um, and the other thing she said was, but the synthesizer can already make those sounds. Why are you working so hard to make them? And I thought, well, <laughs> what have we learned here? <laughs> Um, oh, we learned a little bit about Laurie and what she hears, but uh, what I learned was that people responded to that piece on, on several levels. Um, first of all, there's the gut reaction to the, the poignancy of um, someone being led out into the performance space and, and being so vulnerable in that situation, and then being able to use that vulnerability and explore, what I was trying to explore was, not only did I want to see if, if I could startle myself into making a new sound, but I also wanted to get to a pre-verbal communication where we're responding, the audience was responding to me uh, to my sounds on a level that had nothing to do with words, that had to do with pure communication, just using the voice to make that leap and that jump. This is a, a great segue into, into a whole basic kind of topic that I want to ask you about, which is the notion of an aesthetic that might be uh, a feminine aesthetic. I mean, right now you've described something that very emotional, relationship to the body, having a sense of vulnerability, all things that, um, it's so hard to talk about these things and make generalizations, but I think you could say that these are things that would be a feminine viewpoint. Um, do you consider that a feminine piece or a piece that's... I didn't. Um, I, I found it to be, um, I thought it came out of, of in a way, a, a lot of my experience with performance art. Um, with the kinds of things that I was seeing as I would go performing in Europe, um, you know, Joseph Boyce and, um, oh, various happenings. Um, I was coming into contact with the Fluxus musicians, um, composers, writers, whatever you want to call them, uh, who were dealing with concepts, um, conceptual art, that sort of thing. And I, I didn't really think of it in a gender way. Um, I tried not to think of things in a gender-specific way. 